final challenge, Great Britain versus Australia. Tonight reaches its dramatic conclusion. The head-on clash for the pride and glory of winning the Ashes. Standing between the contenders and that coveted trophy, the greatest gladiators from Great Britain and the most awesome in Australia. The grand final in this battle for the Ashes is introduced by Ulrika Johnson and Mike Hammond. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to the Ashes a final. Now the result over the past couple of weeks has meant that the Aussies have secured themselves a win in the women's event, but it's only thanks to Mark Everett's victory last week that the Brits are in with a fighting chance. And doesn't the home crowd love it? I tell you what, though, I wouldn't be in Mark's shoes for anything tonight. The pressure must be amazing. Not only has he got to compete in his own right, but if he fails, the Ashes go home to Australia. So uh, the, uh, the pressure is really on him tonight. Of course, the winner will take home £6,000. That's 12000 Australian dollars. But the runner-up will take home £2,000. That's about $4,000. So I think we should get them out here. Let's meet the girls. Marissa Hootner. And Catherine Arlo. Welcome, Marissa. Now, what have you been up to since we saw you last? Uh, just basically the same training I always do. I try to keep in a regular routine so don't make things too different. Now, how about tonight? Uh, any favourite events? Uh, I like Hang Tough. So we can look forward to some success in that, we hope. Yeah, and probably the pendulum too. That's oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Marisa Hootner! Now, Catherine, I suppose we should uh, remind Australian viewers, in fact, Brit viewers who haven't seen you before, but you and Marissa have come up against each other before in a domestic series in Australia. Um, that's right. We came up in the uh, grand final and um, unfortunately I fell off hang tough and broke my collarbone So I was unable to run the eliminator and she had to run it by herself. Okay. We wish you all the best tonight. Thanks a lot, Mike. Catherine, I love ladies and gentlemen Now it's time to meet the guys representing Australia, Paul Reynolds And for the Brits, it's Mark Everett feeling remind us uh, first of all what you do and where you come from right I'm from Sydney New South Wales Australia I work in an office and study by day and I work for the Sydney's Hot Shots Dent Show by night I see I see and you're a pretty fit kind of guy what have you been up to since we saw you last any special training or any special preparation no just the usual uh, training that I've been doing I've been doing a lot of sightseeing I went to the Cadbury chocolate factory had a look around I've discovered you guys have the same sort of uh, culture as us we drink lots of beer and you drink more <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mark, are you cool under pressure or what? I mean, how are you feeling at the moment? I'm feeling a bit nervous because um, I know the whole country's riding on my shoulders tonight to perform and win, and I'm just going to give it my best shot. After last week's show, a lot of the crew were talking about how amazed we all are at your athletic ability. I mean, you're fast, you're strong, you really are supremely fit. What do you do to keep fit? What sort of work do you do? Um, I train for the decathlon and weight training, but running up to the gladiators, I, I train with the Boston rugby team, um, sidestepping and power events like sprint drills, etc. So I guess it must have been great last week too when you get home with your young son and Frankie, your fiance. I mean, I know they're with us again tonight, but they wouldn't have missed it for anything. And you've certainly got the crowd on your side, but you've got the whole country's pride riding on your shoulders tonight. So we wish you all the best, Mark. Thank you very much. I'll give it my 100%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Everett for the Brits. So let the Ashes final begin. First up on the pendulum, it's Marissa. And tonight she's facing Vogue. Over to John Anderson. Set the pendulum. and five metre diameter pendulum swings into play and Australia's Marissa Hootner makes her move. A physical education teacher from Canberra looking to give Vogue another 60 second lesson in agility on this giant globe. Last time these two met, Marissa evaded capture for the full minute and scored 10. 
She's headed straight down under, and Vogue is circling around the equator, wondering where in the world is Australia. Marissa defeated our own Sarah Dam and Michelle Kimberley in her Ashes heat, a former waitress, and doing a bit of waiting once again, waiting for Vogue to find her. Here she comes, but Marissa's going to clock up five for keeping her nose clean for 40 seconds. Vogue's within striking distance, but badly placed for a flag snatch. That yellow standard flapping on Marissa's back is Vogue's target. The Aussie tougher than a copper with Crocodile Dundee on his case. Vogue trying to get alongside the flagger down, but the severity of the swing sucks the air from her lungs like a vacuum cleaner. Time up, ten points to Marissa. And the Aussie delegation delighted. Well, although Vogue was close, she was never in a position to prevent the points being scored. Couldn't get a grip of that flag on Marissa, even when we thought Vogue couldn't miss her. Next up on the pendulum, it's Catherine! And she's going to be facing Lightning! Lightning dazzles the crowd with her smile, and with these impressive physical facts and figures, she stands a metre 70 tall and weighs in at 58 kilos. Now, if we compare those numbers now with Catherine's, we'll see the Aussie in her cosy stands a centimetre taller and three kilos three, heavier. Two, one. This is Catherine's first ever competition pendulum. Earlier, she told me that she once chipped her shin bone and fractured her cheekbone while abseiling. And in her time, she's broken her clavicle, which is a great pity because it's my favourite Australian musical instrument. Just joking. Meanwhile, Lightning looks to have located her at last. Catherine hanging on in, waiting until she's forced to make a move. Lightning descending to try and deny her the points. That flapping flag makes a tempting target. Lightning well placed to finish it. Catherine should think about crabbing sideways. Kristen and Tracy's mascara looks to have run. They just wish Catherine would too. Lightning strikes, can't get up, but John Anderson's whistled it to a stop. 38.7 on the clock. Maybe another look will tell us why. Did Catherine block on the blind side? Well, I'm sure John Anderson will let us know later. Meanwhile, here's Uli. Well, Catherine, that was a very, very hard event, and certainly as you're going to the bottom of the pendulum, you're at the toughest part of the pendulum. Were you aware that John Anderson blew the whistle before the end of the game? Um... I had an idea after all, after what I did. She came around the side and as she grabbed for my tag, I just kind of like put, put an arm out. And I think that's illegal. It certainly is here. John, come and explain yourself. Yes, this is a chase game and uh, the contenders are not allowed to block the gladiator getting to it. They've got to move away. And in this case, the contender used the body to block from the gladiator and is therefore disqualified. Well. The rules on these occasions are quite clear, even if John Anderson isn't. Marissa has ten, Catherine yet to score. We've seen the girls, now let's see the guys. First up for Australia, let's welcome Paul Reynolds. And our gladiator, Saracen. Saracen stacks up superbly. 1 meter 82 height-wise, 108 weight-wise, and 122 when he pops out his chest. Australia's Paul Reynolds measures up well, but still 4 centimeters shorter, 28 kilos lighter, and 10 centimeters less round the chest wall region. Three, two, one! Paul has an impressive record on the pendulum, scored 10 against Hunter, and that's a bit of a rarity in the record books. Paul, you may remember, prefers to head for the North Pole when defending his flag. Saracen scampering round, Paul keeping a sharp lookout. See Saracen coming over the horizon and makes his move. Paul, a professional dancer, more used to swinging round a ballroom rather than a round swinging ball. The Antipodeans in the crowd look concerned, but this Aussie moves faster than a jumbuck with a jaw full of jellyfish. Saracen stopped, figuring out what to do next, decides that a change in direction might be in order, but Paul is certainly good for five, and Saracen's got plenty to do if he's to stop this jolly New South Wales swag man from shoving ten points in his tucker bag. Paul on top of the world at the moment. The founder of the Sydney Hot Shots is certainly a hot shot on the pendulum. Looks like he's seen off Saracen with a combination of cunning and confidence. And this performance will give Mark Everett something to think about. Saracen looks to be stuck, but Paul was right on the ball in this event. John Anderson calls it a day. Ten points to the amazing Aussie, and the flags are flying already. Saracen found himself stuck in the net, but would have had little chance of catching his colonial foe. To the guy under all the pressure representing Great Britain, it's Mark. 
And our gladiator is Condor. Earlier, Mark told me what he thought about Paul Reynolds. I've seen Paul in training, and I'm, um, I know he's a superb athlete. He's very strong, quick, and good at most of the games. Um, I think we're both the same thinking. He's pleased if he wins, and I'll be very pleased if I win. Um, we're just going to have to get it on and wait and see what happens. But I'm just so pleased to get to the final, represent the UK. I'm going to bring the Ashes back to this country. Three, two, one! Mark Everett from Lincolnshire, a former National Gladiators champion, now an international representative, waits to see the Condor and then makes his move. Steps a bit lively to his left. Wife to be Frankie with her sister Andrea. They've seen some action in their time on Gladiators. Supported Mark through and through. Condor, as expected, dominating from an altitude and swoops down on Mark. And Mark has to take flight to evade this feathered foe. Mark descending at speed, but Condor very fast for such a big old bird. Mark drops down and loses his feet. Mark swinging in the wind, clinging for all he's worth, and in a few seconds he'll be worth five points. And the Aussies are complaining that Condor hasn't finished it. Mark's held on for five, but we shouldn't hold our breath for ten. Condor teeing himself up for the flag snatch. Makes a grab. Oh, nearly got it. Fine work by the Condor. Five valuable points for Mark. And here's that finish again. Condor makes a grab, touches the flag. Mark tries to shuffle away, but lets go of the pendulum and the extra points. But still nets five. After one event in this Ashes final, Paul kicks off with 10, Mark 5. Event number two. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Catherine. She's going to be chased by Vogue. Also getting ready to climb, it's Marissa. And she's going to be pursued by Lightning. Here's what Marissa has to say about Catherine. Uh, I think I'll do fairly well against Catherine today. Um, I think that she might do a little bit better on the games than I, but I know that I'm faster in the Eliminator than she is. But unfortunately, the Eliminator here is quite different, as I found out the other day. So it will be a very hard battle. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second. Three, two... One. Catherine nearest the camera on the left side of the wall and Marissa on the right. We know Catherine's an accident prone abseiler. Let's hope she's a more careful climber. Here come the British flags. Catherine's in the lead. She's been chased by Bo with lightning on Marissa. Catherine over the second overhang, stuck a bit but sorts herself out. Catherine with a, an extraordinary climbing style, but this will be no picnic at Hanging Rock. Both way behind, but Lightning's getting the grip to Marissa. Stops her in her tracks and heaves it from the wall. Catherine staring at the summit. Over she goes for 10 points. Good climb. The national flags get another airing. Catherine, well done. You said you liked the wall. You've just got up here and got yourself 10 points. Well done. Yeah! <laughs> that was great. Um, really looking forward to the wall. As I said, I've got a lot of upper body strength. Excuse me to all the climbers out there. I do not have a good technique, but that's the first one to the top that wins. Who cares about technique when it works? Well done, Catherine. That's a fantastic result. Ten points. Certainly is a fantastic result. Gets her right back in the picture. Ten all after two events. for Great Britain, not a great wall technician, knows he needs the points. Paul in yellow for Australia. Here come those glads, and we know Hunter is a takedown expert, so Mark must have the advantage. Condor making hard work of the handholds, Paul using the overhang like a ledge. Paul slips, then he crashes into Hunter, but it looks like victory for Great Britain. The girls are out of their seats, and Mark's in his element. A faultless climb rewarded with a maximum 10 points for being top of the heat. Gets his leg over. 
claims his reward. So tell me, Mark, what sort of training did you do for an event like that? Well, that night, that's the first time I've ever got up the wall successfully. And I was absolutely dreading that. But it just paid off in the end. It's not often that anyone gets away from Condor. He's very, very quick on the wall. He's one of our best Australian gladiators at that. A well-deserved and well-earned 10 points. Well done. Thank you very much. Let's have a big round of applause for Mark. Well, Condor, I guess all I can ask is what happened. Well, it's a new wall to me, so I should have done a left when I did a right. That's about it. Well, I think we'll leave it at that because I don't think you particularly want to say any more. But Paul, mm, a little bit unlucky, but then you've got the top man behind you. Oh, I think Hunter's been up there and oiled all the pegs for me beforehand. I just slipped off, what can I say? He's good. He's quick. I knew he was quick anyway, so... And unfortunately for you, not much of a challenge. No, he did okay. Um, I had a bad start, I did have a little bit of a slip. Uh, but uh, I think he slipped off in the end. And uh, I want to see Mark get to the top, so uh, nice one, Mark. Nice one for Mark and nice one, Hunter. Let's hear it for Paul and Condor too. Nice one. Paul 10, Mark 15. Swingshot, Hang Tough and Jewel. Join us for more Ashes action after the break here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the Ashes series here at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. We're set for our next event. Swingshot. Our challengers representing Australia are Catherine and Marissa. Our British gladiators are Laser and Lightning. Currently, John Anderson. Contender. for a share of the spoils. Catherine first up the pole, Lightning keeps her out, and there's a terrible tangle. These Aussies spinning like a couple of kangaroos caught on a carousel. That'll take some untying, and Marissa refusing to let the yellow go. Looking at it again, Catherine's first cuts across Marissa's projected trajectory, then they both become entwined. John Anderson will tell us how many seconds there are remaining, but my guess is about 50. There are 50 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Ah, so the old stopwatch does work after all. Swing out, sisters, take two. One nil to Marissa from that first yellow. Lightning high and mighty stops Catherine, but Marissa with more yellows for the collection. Recalls to basket the booty. Catherine again, but Lightning there to stop the looting. Marissa winding up, here she comes, Laser with her just short of a blue. Catherine again. Lightning anticipates the antipathy and then keeps those hands off the points, back to a perch. Here's Marissa with free time. Oh, claims a blue for two, shoots it up, spits it out. Mounts the basket for a bigger leap. Here's Catherine, oh, a clumsy bounce, like a wannabe wearing Wellingtons, but still manages to come away with a blue. Now, can she bank it before the time up? The court dragged her away from the basket. She's not going to pass it. Helping hand, but too late, there's the hooter. And Marissa returns to the tower. Let's relive some aerial action. All four swingers meet in the middle. Lightning keeps Catherine out, but Marissa claims a pair of lemons and registers them in the basket. Unfortunately for Catherine, the round had ended when she got that final blue ball. Therefore, her score is zero. For Marissa, better news, five points. Let's hear for our gladiators, Laser and Lightning. Good work from the Glads, and Marissa's swing shot success means that she takes the lead after three events, 15 points to 10. So now we move into the men's event with Mark. And representing Australia, it's Paul. And they're going to be facing Wolfman and Taipan. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Let me go! Ready! Three, two, one! The ref gets.
gets it started, the guys get swinging and the glass get it sorted. Ball's raining down and Mark returns with a red for three. Great start back for more. Giant Leaf grabs another red. The high-flying bit bags another three-pointer. And Paul baskets a blue to make the score 6-2. Ty Pan will be boarding like a saucepan because of his failure to get to grips with Mark. Paul again. Ty Pan again. And Paul plucks a yellow. And Mark grabs the freebie. Another blue for two. 8-3. A storming swing shot. There's Paul again. Beach Wolf to the bounce, can't connect, Mark again, blue. Mark just a scoring machine at the moment. Tight man will be better off working as a typist. 10-3 the score. Mark back for more, but can't grab the remaining blue. The cylinder all but stripped clean. Paul wants to make the last ball his. Swings out, he claims it! Two more for Paul, and that's about it for swing shots. Mark the high flyer in that event. And the family lead the acclaim. And little Harlem joins in. His dad did well in the opener. Mark beat Paul and both lads to the bounce and was a head and shoulders above the rest to snaffle the red. Impressive recoil, too. So at the end of that event, Paul picked up two blues and one yellow. That's five points. Mark picked up two red, two blues. Oh, it's like the last night at the proms down there. Oh, the Taipan, Australia's crocodile done nothing, but at least the wolf can flash his fangs. After three explosive events, Paul moves up to 15 and Mark to 25. Tales of the tape go like this. First, Rio, 1 meter 87 frame, supporting 83 kilos of weight. Now, Marissa's measurements, which confirms she's 22 centimeters shorter and 22 kilos lighter. It's a bit like Kate Moss taking on Roseanne Barr. Three, two, well, it's the second one. time these two have clashed on the platforms. The first duel went to Rio, and Rio getting to work. Double fisted, Rio swinging them in right and left. All right on the helmet. She's left in a daze. Marissa's going. Oh, steps across and joins Rio on her platform. And that puts pay to Marissa's scoring chances. So that's what you look like close up. Rio relentless with the pugil stick, swinging and swiping, putting together a combination of blows and jabs. Managed to draw Marissa's balance, and over she went. Well, congratulations, Rio, but she did give you a little bit of a challenge there. Yeah, I must say, I think I'm quite comfortable up there, so she's a really tough cookie. You certainly were. I mean, you didn't pick up any points on this occasion, but uh, great compliments coming from Rio. Yeah, um, she is a very tough contender. She gave me a few herself. She kept getting my stick out of my hand, so I overbalanced and stepped on to join her. That's her job. Let's hear it for Marissa and for Rio. Well done. Catherine first duelled with Laser last week. Here's what she said about it. Being a new gladiator, I didn't think that she'd um, she'd be so good. And in fact, with that height advantage, she took a long handle, like you do on a cricket back when you want to hit a six, and boy, did she nearly hit me into next week. <laughs> Struth, it worked. Here she is now, to the minute. Three, two, time laser conceded 10 points to the Australian contender so she wants to improve upon that but this is not a good start laser all over the platform recovers well and now laser making sure Catherine gets well and truly bushwhacked Catherine is the 1996 Australian wrestling and judo champion so she can get more fired up than a hungry dingo in a deli but laser taking the battle to her launching some bombs but Catherine soaking them up takes a smacking but keeps on whacking oh the time's up from both girls. And the Australians celebrate five well-earned points. Catherine the Great, they call her. In the opening seconds, Laser actually lost her stick, recovered it, and then lost her balance. Recovered that, and then started to get stuck in on her Aussie antagonist. Well, Laser, I suppose I should congratulate you on recovering, because at one time I thought we were going to lose you completely. I know, I thought I was off there for a moment. I mean, you came back and you were a bit angry. Absolutely. 
And I could see she was scared. I saw that fear in her eyes. Time was too short. Certainly was. I mean, you put up a great resistance. As I said, you nearly, nearly knocked her off. Yeah, I was so surprised that she was bending over. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to knock over a gladiator. So I thought I'd better not, and it ruined the show. It certainly would have done, but you picked up five points. Well done, Catherine. And Laser. So that evens it up 15 all after four events. We've seen the girls, now let's see the guys. Representing Australia, it's Paul. The gladiator for the Brits is Hunter. Their first pugilistic encounter on the platforms was two weeks ago. Here's what Paul had to say about it. Duel was great fun. I was prepared for it. I was ready for it. I really, really worked it out. Um, I had a lot of uh, coaching with that particular game, and I, and I knew I was coming up Hunter, and I knew he wanted revenge. I was ready for him. I was going to smash him. I was going to crack him. But it just turned out that uh, I went the wrong way. On the very first hit, he came down with a huge, mighty blow to the head strong enough to knock King Kong off his perch, and I just went down like a bag of potatoes. And he is hoping Hunter gives him another mashing. Three, two, one! Right, let's get this hammer horror underway, and already Paul's done better than last time. Hunter won't be pleased at having to work this hard to finish it. Paul digging in, Hunter flying the rights into Paul, and Paul steps across the Hunter falls but wins the event. Hunter once again, the capacity crowd pleaser. Falls down, but you've got to take your hat off to Hunter, and the flags are out for him. A great British gladiator. What did you have for breakfast, mate? <laughs> Big bowl of punch. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not the way I'd like to win. The contender steps over the platform. It's always nice to win with a clean knockdown, but uh, very defensive that time. Last time I took him out, and he was obviously aware I was going to hit him with a few big blows. But he said it a bit longer than last time. <laughs> Paul, come in here. I know that you were so psyched up for that round, out behind, backstage before it started. You were so focused on it. Man, I was out for revenge, because he got me a beauty last game. The tension was that thick he could have cut it with a knife up there. We were looking at each other, ready to kill. I'm glad it's over in a way, but uh, full credit to him. He played a good fight. Right. Well done. Let's have a big round of applause for our challenger, Paul, and for our bloody Anna Hunter. No points for the Australian camp. How will the Brits go? It's Mark! Against the gladiator Vulcan! Let's compare these combatants. First, the Australian mean machine Vulcan. That's his own hair, by the way. It must be. Who'd buy a wig like that? 191 and 115, which means the British boy is 3 centimetres shorter and 29 kilos lighter. And to add to his misery, this Vulcan has never been defeated. My son. Two, one. And Mark first to fire, and Vulcan a bit of a muddle with his stick, head down, comes back. Oh, what a screaming right! Mark gets a rattling, but keeps on battling. The Vulcan unloads a pile of punishment on Mark. Oh, it pushes him back with the prod. Mark dispatched to the mat. Vulcan throws down the gauntlet. Hang on a minute. You meant to do that before the fight. Oh, he knows the words. Or well, maybe not. Vulcan. I think showing up there that when it gets down to the ashes of the pride of your nation, it's not only how our Australian challengers perform, but how the Australian gladiators perform at stopping the Brits from scoring points. Tonight, I want to let all you Brits know that I am the king. Well, I think the Queen may dispute that. Frankie and Andrea certainly do. I don't think you'll find too many people here agreeing. I don't think you will either, Mark. No, he's not the king. We're the best, the Brits. He got a bit lucky on that game. I hit him with a few good blows. He got me due respect to him. But then he just prodded me and I was off balance, so he's lucky. Well, mate, you're a great sportsman. Uh, we'll see how you go for the rest of the night. No points, unfortunately. Let's have a big round of applause for our Brit challenger, Mark! After four events, Mark still leads the way, 25 points to 15. Representing Australia, it's Marissa. For Great Britain, it's Lightning. Our referee for this round, John Forsyth. Contender, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, 
two, one. The last event before the final Ashes Eliminator, so the contenders are looking to make it count. When Marissa squared up to Lightning on the rings two weeks ago, she scored five. This time, Lightning will be looking to pay her back big time. Lightning defending the center rings, Marissa looking to swing by. We're used to flashes of brilliance from Lightning, and we need one now because Marissa is charging down the left wing. Lightning trying to get back on terms, but she's the wrong side of Marissa to defend the platform. Marissa can see 10 points waiting if she can get her swing going. She's in the scoring zone. Lightning screams in. Blocks onto Marissa. What a swing. Marissa knees high. Lightning getting a maul into the face and the throat. This can't be allowed. But the ref's not stopped it. Lightning grabbing her leg, still grappling off that heavy illegal punishment. Gets a handle on Marissa's belt. Marissa needs reminding it's hang tough. Not Australian rules football up there, mate. Lightning's got her in the executioner's embrace. Marissa hanging tough. This, she says, is her favourite event. Lightning can't shift her, and she stays the distance. Fury and Delta happy with the five points. And Glacier. John Forsyth will surely have something to say about this. John, what's the ruling? Well, unfortunately, whether it's intentional or unintentional, you can't attack around the throat or the head, so I'm afraid we're going to have to disqualify Marissa. Marissa, no points there. You must be disappointed. Obviously, uh, the spirit of Gladiators, it wasn't an intentional move. No, it wasn't, and I always believe that um, anything head high, like in also in rugby league and everything that we play back in Australia, that if anything's aimed at the head, it is very dangerous, so I can see their point of view, but I am very disappointed, yes. Well, rules are rules, and safety is number one on the game. Unfortunately for you there, no points, Marissa. Let's have a big round of applause for Marissa and for Lightning, our gladiator. <laughs> round two for the girls. It's Captain against Vogue. Conceded 10 points to Catherine on the wall earlier, so she'll be looking to avenge that defeat. Let's see the supermodel super stats. She's 1 meter 67 tall and weighs 63 kilos. So although she's four centimeters shorter than Catherine, she's two kilos heavier. Two, one. The cover girl swings out, and there's nothing vague about Vogue when it comes to single-minded determination. Catherine has admitted that this is her least favorite event, and Vogue knows that. In her last hang tough, Catherine crashed out courtesy of Lightning. Wide on the right wing, getting a red ring. Vogue will traverse to intercept. Catherine in a scoring position, but Vogue keeping her in check. Vogue makes a move. The scissors are on. Catherine's got a lot of hanging tough to do. She's going to cling to those points. Vogue trying to shake her free. Oh, there she goes. Textbook takedown, if I say so myself. Vogue moves in, catches Catherine, ties her up and completes the gift wrapping. A very welcome present for the great British crowd, delivered first class. So after five events, Marissa and Catherine are evenly placed, 15 apiece. Great British beef at its best. 108 kilos of sheer strength and a lovely mover. Three, two, one. Last week, Ulrika called Tai Pan the king of the rings. That was shortly before he lost to Mark Everett. Let's hope that doesn't bode ill for Saracen right now. Paul hits the centre and the scoring zone. Saracen not well positioned for a takedown scenario. Twisted his rings there, that'll slow him. Paul lost to Wolf in hang tough two weeks ago. He's much better placed now, though. Saracen's been out positioned, and who can believe this? Paul sails onto the platform for 10 very fast hang tough points. Took 25 seconds to secure the maximum. The Aussie's ecstatic. Oh, Sarah, there I go introducing you as the king of the rings, and um, hmm, I'm not quite sure what you're king of. It was your fault. I'm sorry, did I preempt it? He was darn good, though, wasn't he? He was good. That is the first time I've ever had anyone land on my platform. So, please, a big round of applause. Let's hear it for Paul! I thought, actually, when he was standing up there, you were looking a little bit uncertain, and then you were just so confident. I was. I've been having such a bad day, I tell you. I'm so glad to win that one. I think it was a lot of luck involved. Poor old Saracen got a bad ring up there, and then I just got through and just... I just scraped onto the platform, mind you, though. I nearly fell off. Well. 
There wasn't just luck, there was a lot of skill in there to, as well. Let's hear it for Paul and for Sarah. Well done. I've got no excuses. I had a bad day, I suppose. A bad day, but the Brits love him anyway. Great gladiator, great guy. Next up on Hang Tough, it's Mark! And he's going to be facing Taipan! Yes, it's old Smiler himself. I see. Clearly no laughs to be had with him, so let's find out what he's got to offer stat-wise. He boasts a mighty 81 meter 83 figure and weighs 105 kilos. Bet he's the life and soul of a party. Three. Two, one. Cheerful chop swings out. Last week he was more tin pot than Tai Pan. Surrendered ten points to Mark, so he'll be looking for some payback tonight. Mark in a red ring already and bypasses the Tai Pan with ease. Are we in for a repeat performance? The Pan Man covering his platform. Mark stalls and makes to traverse to the centre, but he's lining himself up to become a pancake. The Gladiator can't connect, but Mark's one wing. Mark recovers, but he's becalmed at the Australian's mercy. The Gladiator in a cold defensive position. Mark looking to go down the blind side. Taipan there. Mark making serious progress now. Two rings from the platform. Surely this has got to be it. He's there! Oh, no, he's not! Straight into the jaws of hell. This looks serious. Oh, he's down! How unlucky can you get? Oh, nice sporting reaction from the Aussie girls. Let's find out what happened. Oh, Mark. I'm not happy. You must be devastated. A bit devastated, yeah. It's going fairly well. Um... You put in a lot of work there. I mean, traversing, getting out of his way, and then... Yeah, he just caught me. Um, if I had enough swing and was over one more ring, I would have made it, but I didn't have the bottle to just go for the platform. So I wouldn't have made it, so I had to come back, and that's when he got me. Well, there's a lot of disappointed people in the audience, but I expect you're delighted. I'm wrapped. I'm really wrapped with that. It was a bit of uh, cat and mouse at the end there, but uh, I'm the cat. You certainly were. Let's hear it for Taipan, and let's hear it for Mark. Never mind. I thought Taipans were snakes, not cats. Never mind. After five events, Australia evens the score, 25 apiece. Well, now it's do or die time. Waiting just around the corner is the eliminator. Join us after the break. Here on Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where it's Eliminator time. Now, will the Ashes remain undecided or will they go back to Australia? We'll be finding out in just a moment. First, let's take a look at the scoreboard. Both Marissa and Catherine are on 15 points. There will be no head start. Over to you, Mike. Well, of course, Ulrika, last time we met in the Ashes, the female Brits won the event. Tonight, it's going to be an Australian. Marissa, last time we saw you here on the Eliminator, uh, we can see the damage that the Travelator did to you. What sort of thoughts go through your mind as you're going to face it tonight? Uh, this time, I'd like to eat it first. OK, so you're going to eat up the Travelator. We hope so. Catherine, are you all set for this event? No problems. As I said to everybody else, the Australians aren't here for a long time. We're here for a good time. Well, we're sure that uh, the British crowd is going to be behind both of our challenges tonight. All that remains now is to see which side you start from. We'll bring John Forsyth in to do the toss. Catherine? Heads. Call for heads. Heads, heads it is. is. OK, we'll swap sides and get set to start the event. You can do it, Kath! Catherine and Marissa, you will both go on my first whistle. Three, two, one. Well, the only one. thing you can predict in this particular eliminator is an Australian victory. The girls from down under go up and over. Marissa from Canberra nearest the camera. Into the bungee where the elastic is designed to stretch the contender. Catherine emerges intact first. The only way is up the rope. Leaps to the hand ladder. Marissa had a nightmare travel later in her heat, but Catherine has completed the course in 1 minute 13 and is striking out with a good lead. The rollers proved to be problem free. Both girls safely onto the net, and Marissa claws back the lead. A level pegging on the net, the PE teacher versus the physiotherapist and personal trainer. Up to the gantry, and Marissa just ahead. She'll take the further zip line. Fury and Storm on their feet. Side by side down the slide, simultaneous splashdown. First to recover is Marissa, but Catherine is up the beam first. Marissa retakes the lead, good balance from both girls. Marissa in the lead. 
Old Cup wins off. Marissa up the trouble later. Can she tame it this time? Oh, she stumbles. Oh, she's slipping. No, she gets the leg over. She's there. The Ashes champion, Marissa Hitner from Canberra. The celebrations have started already. Catherine, their valiant contender from Victoria, lost her balance on the beam with half a minute to go and lost her claim on the title at the same time. Up the travel eater with ease, a gallant runner-up. Well, Marissa Hootner, you must be in agony, but you must be absolutely delighted. After all that, I'm going to make you hold that because I'm not holding it for a second longer than I have to. Huge congratulations. How are you feeling? Very tired, but very happy. You must be delighted. I am. I knew it was going to be tough getting that big travel later, but I wasn't going to let it break me again. No, I mean, you've got the scars to prove you've been here a couple of times. And in here, I have a cheque for £6,000. I understand that's about $12,000 uh, Australian dollars. Let's hear it for Marissa! Well done! Catherine, sometimes it's the, the things that we don't think will cause us any trouble that, that actually jump up and do it. And for you, it was that balance beam. I mean, that's probably everyone would think the easiest piece of equipment on the whole course. No, for me, the rolling logs and the balance thing have been my bogey. But uh, all credit to Marissa. She had a clean run, she went all the way through. We've had a good time, the Australians have come and had a really good time. Thanks to everybody and thank you, Birmingham. Yeah. Well done, a great spot. And for you, Catherine. Wow. Don't go yet because I have something to give you. Of course, there's your trophy and a check for 2,000 pounds, which is well worth it. 4,000 Australian dollars, well done. Congratulations and congratulate both our Australians. A fantastic event there in the female eliminator. Both girls with their hands full there, and both guys have got their hands full as well. Level pegging scores wise means a head-to-head -head start on the men's eliminator. Well, Mark, what a night it's been so far. Now, of course, there's no head start at all. You've got the ashes, the result of the ashes resting on your shoulders, <laughs> just to put it mildly. A little bit of pressure. Um, best thing I can do is just give it 100%. That, that way I'll know that I'm going to perform well. And what about you, Paul? I mean, you've had some support from our audience here tonight, but uh, this is the deciding factor as far as the ashes go. Yes, well, Ulrika, the audience has been fabulous tonight. Thank you very much, England. However, this is the biggest event of my life, and I'm going to give it 100%. And I've got the pressure of all Australia on my shoulders, so I'm going to carry that and hopefully bring home the ashes to Australia. Well, we'll wait to find out what the result is, but as there's no head start, let's bring in John Anderson to flip a coin as to who's going to go in which lane. So um, I'll ask you to flip the coin, and then you can ask Mark to call. Thank you, Rika. Mark, you're going to call, and the winner of the toss gets to decide. Heads. Heads. Heads is called. Heads it is. All right, Mark, which side do you want to go on? It's, I'll stay on this side. All right, then. OK, the very best of luck to both of you, and we'll all be watching you very intensely. Good luck. Over to John Anderson. Race here in Delta, leading the Australian contingent. Mark and Paul, you will both go on my whistle. Three. So it's Great Britain versus Australia. Mark Everett from Boston in Lincolnshire against Paul Reynolds from Sydney, New South Wales. Scrambling through the rubber room, the slightest mistake on any element will cost dear tonight. And Paul slips into the lead. Paul spins the pedals into action and Mark starts the handbike. Screaming him on is Frankie. Paul bounds across the rollers like a kangaroo. Mark having a tough handbike. Paul on the net, joined by Mark now. Mark needs a good net if he's to stay on terms. The Aussies can see the ashes going down under. Paul onto the gantry, the lead beginning to yawn. Frankie can feel it slipping. Mark up and at it. Paul down on the zip for Australia. Spectacular splashdown ahead of him, the graveyard. It's all on the line now for Mark. Paul on the beam. Kristen and Tracy are on their feet. They think it's all over. It is now. Paul Reynolds swings through to secure the ashes for Australia. A great win, but from a head-to-head -head start. Mark Everett, the gallant Brit, gave his all, but the ashes are Australia's. You must be so excited, delighted, everything. Oh, words cannot describe. This is unbelievable. I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> the biggest event of your life, and you come through a winner. 
Oh, when am I gonna wake up? Somebody push me, please. This is unbelievable. Well, let me wake you up by giving you this big mama what? here oh, no. and a check for six thousand pounds. Oh, no. And unfortunately for us, you will be going back to Australia with the ashes. Oh, God, so proud. Thank you to all the Australian team. I did this for the Australian team. Mary and Connie, I promise that's that. All the executives, all the staff, everybody's been behind this. This is unbelievable. I want to say thank you to everybody here, and especially to my contender, Mark, who's been brilliant. He's been a gentleman the whole way through again. Let's hear it for Australia and Paul Reynolds. Well done. <laughs> commiserations, commiserations. Let's present you with your trophy, and of course, a prize for 2,000 pounds for being the runner-up, and of course, You've been the man under the most pressure tonight, being the only one who could have saved the Ashes and kept it in a tight situation. Unfortunately, that wasn't the way tonight. Yeah. Um, the eliminator went really well. I just messed up on the handbike. I didn't seem to have it when I wanted to pull it out of the bag. Look, I know that for sure, not only the home crowd, but I'm sure everybody around the world is, is really inspired by your sportsmanship and uh, just at how great and fit and athletic you are. And congratulations, anyone, a fantastic effort right through this series. Let's have a big round of applause for Mark. Well done, Mark. Well done. Good job, Australia. Well, I have to say, I'm truly gutted. <laughs> Look, I, I have to smile, Ulrika, because I must admit that for my countrymen and for Australia, I'm very happy. But the challenge is well and truly set. Here are the ashes, and uh, we'll be taking them home. But you guys will have to come back to get them. We'll see you next time when we do the Ashes again. So the challenge is well and truly there for you, Brits. Yeah, Rebecca. you bet your bottom dollar. We'll be back. Join us for more action on Gladiators. Goodbye. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. In a few moments, Jim Bowen and Tony Green are here as three more couples get ready to play bullseye and try to win a speedboat. Probably. Then at nine, four famous faces are waiting to raise money for charity. That's the Chase Celebrity Special. New to challenge.